Stewart published a book entitled Nature's Num Human understanding about nature has moved between two contrasting viewpoints for a great number of centuries. The cosmos obeys fixed, immutable laws according to one view, and everything exists in a well-defined objective reality. The opposite view is that there is no such thing as objective reality, that flux is all, change is everything. The growth of science is largely influenced by the first perspective, but as we move forward together as a nation, there have been growing indications that the dominant cultural context is beginning to change to the second way of thought. Are we not all familiar with Sir Isaac Newton? He was an English mathematician, physicist, astronomer, theologian, and author identified in his own day as a natural philosopher, generally viewed in the scientific revolution as one of the most influential scientists of all time and as a key figure. Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, a prominent German polymath and one of the Enlightenment's most influential logicians, mathematicians, and natural philosophers, was associated with his discovery in calculus. Newton and Leibniz find the including the integration and differentiation techniques. Both of techniques function together. Between them, they inform you that a certain moment. If you recognize either of the function including position, velocity, or acceleration, the configure out of other two. Because of Newton's law and the physics, mathematical processes can be used to explain changes in the nature. An example is the change rate of the certain entity or event that leads to the difference between any quantity now and its value an instant into the future. This type is called the differential equation. In actual situations, there are other types of differential equation that can be implemented. This includes describing the exponential growth and structure, adjusting the return on investment throughout time, and modeling the development of cancer. Aren't we all stumped into how the world floats in space magically? In fact, the earth and the people are held in place by no magic but rather gravity, which was discovered three centuries ago. The discovery of love gravitation by Newton focused on a solution to explain and then solve the universe in terms of differential equations. Newton presumed that for any two bodies in the universe, there would be the same attracting force. Solved at that time meant discovering the mathematical formula for the motion, Paul's law, law of friction, Joule's law are some examples. They struggled to find exact solutions, as Newton and his predecessors attempted to solve equations for a system of three or more bodies. They sought instead to find ways of calculating estimated numbers. French astronomer Charles Eugène de Luny, for example, filled an entire book around the 1860 with a single approximation of the moon's motion. There were other concerns with approximate algorithms, such as the problem of build packing, the cover of the vertex, and the shortest superstring. Time shifts, and so do the form in which we think. In 1994, Zhong Xia revealed that a three-body system is not implementable since it shows the diffusion of Arnold, whom Vladimir Arnold discovered. This phenomenon causes an extremely slow, random drift in the relative orbital positions. Nevertheless, this drift is not really random because chaos is now known as this action. Lord's attractor Double Pendulum, and Voinovich Stadium are examples. It should be acknowledged that these events modify the sense of result. It has changed from seeking a formula to finding approximate numbers, and it has now become apparent how resolutions lie. It is incorrect to see this growth as a retreat. 
for what the shift in context has shown us is that no formulas will arise for problems such as three body dilemma, but there is always a way to solve it. The Nature's Numbers book by Ian Stewart is packed with details along with new ways of thinking on the use of mathematics in nature. Via differential equations in the relation to change, they extended the notions of constant of change. Stewart progressed by explaining how as the introduction of new constants, the sense of salt altered over time. He presented an understanding of nature which relies not only on mathematical processes but also on qualitative descriptions to interpret the patterns of nature using their own words. To sum up, what can we affirm? I am Janelle Ray Britannico. I am Janelle Otero. I am Stephanie Malapitan. I am Jalessa Marie Naman. We, we affirm that constants generates change. And we affirm that constants generates change. We affirm that constant generates change.